All right, we talked a little bit about what some of the different physiologies are gonna look like when we use point of care ultrasound. We've talked about obstructive and cardiogenic shock, including pump failure and mechanical cardiogenic shock. Now we're gonna talk about some of the hemorrhagic sources. And I will just say that in my career, these are the ones that have surprised me the most, right? Because we, most of the time we think of bleeding as something due to trauma or maybe GI bleeding, which is not that easy to recognize with point of care ultrasound. But I can't tell you how many times I've been surprised by weird spontaneous abdominal bleeding. Um, maybe I haven't, I can't say that chest bleeding, spontaneous hidden chest bleeding has been that common in my life, but I've heard about it. I've heard people talk about it, but the spontaneous intra-abdominal like mesenteric aneurysms or abdominal aortic aneurysms or spontaneous spleen ruptures are the things that have caught me off guard and surprised me the most, but by using ultrasound and identifying them early probably saved people's lives. So these, even though they're not going to be as common, these can dramatically change how you're going to manage these patients. And the first one's, you know, relatively easy, the abdominal aortic aneurysm. And again, if they're in fairly significant shock and they're confused or they have altered mental status, they may not complain a lot of abdominal flank or back pain. So you want to take a look for this. And straightforward, pretty easy. You're going to find the aorta sitting on top of the spine. You're going to follow it down. And is it dilated or not? probably not going to see direct signs of rupture. It's been described, but you're not always reliably going to find it. So you have to incorporate this finding if you see it with the rest of the clinical picture. Does it make sense or not? And don't forget, obviously, patients can be walking around with chronic triple A's and then also be in septic shock or cardiogenic shock or other things. So, so take the information and incorporate it with the clinical picture. Now, these are some of the findings that you might see in some spontaneous intra-abdominal bleeding, or some patients may have occult trauma. They fell and hurt themselves. Maybe they're on a blood thinner, but they're in shock and you can't get a good history. And these findings might be the only things to, to lead you to this. Or this could be the ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Uh, again, depending on your scenario, that's where this is going to make sense. So here we see fluid in Morrison's pouch over on the right between the liver and the kidney. Here we see fluid outlining the intestines. So this is fluid in the pericolic gutter and I always encourage you to look here. And here we see fluid around the spleen. When you look on this left side, it's really important and I think it's important on both sides, but even more critical on the left, identify the diaphragm and try to examine the entire spleen and look for fluid around it if you're looking for intra-abdominal fluid uh, or blood or spontaneous bleeding. Then when you get to the pelvis, you look, you have fan through, examine the bladder entirely, look for fluid, usually behind it, but depending on which, where you're slicing this view, it could be all the way on top of it. And in the females, identify the uterus and look for blood behind the uterus. And that's what you see here. Uterus, fluid behind. Just a few more examples. And I want to point out that if it's blood, it may start to clot and it may start to look a little bit gray. And that's what we're seeing here is we see some fresh blood and some of this gray stuff is blood that started to clot. So don't just lock your brain, your eyes into looking for the black stuff in the abdomen because clot may start to look gray. And here on this left side, and this is something I've started to just look for. This is on the left, the spleen, if you remember, and if you've looked at some of the tutorials on the FAST exam, you know that the, the spleen should be about the same size as the left kidney. It should be very homogeneous, crescent-shaped, kind of the same density all throughout. Here we see this spleen is just enlarged. It's way bigger than the left kidney, and it's heterogeneous, all these different shades of gray and white and black, and that's because this is hemorrhage and clot and blood kind of all mixed in with whatever's left of this spleen and a splenic hemorrhage. And this may be, again, occult trauma, fell and hit their side on the bathtub, and they're on a pixaban, uh, or maybe it's a spontaneous spleen rupture, which has been reported at uh, somewhat higher incidence in patients taking the direct oral anticoagulants, which are very common now. And in this one, this is going to be in a you know, subset patient population, females of childbearing age, but here we see intra-abdominal fluid. This is actually a mass in the left adnexa, and this fluid, some of which is seen here, it's complex fluid. So this is a sign of hemorrhagic fluid or blood in the pelvis. So this is a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. We may see fluid in the chest. This may be an etiology of shock. There could be spontaneous chest bleeding, or again, maybe there's occult trauma that the patient doesn't recall, the history is unclear. But this could be fluid or blood within the chest. Hopefully we're gonna identify this as we do the chest portion of our shock point of care ultrasound exam.